Wow. We're into August and it's another sheep season and look who I have with me. Well, this is uh, sheep hunt number six. I've harvested four of the five years. So I've been pretty fortunate, you know, to be able to come with you and be able to be healthy enough to travel with you guys. Well, unfortunately this year Coulter couldn't make it. He made the call to play hockey instead of come on this trip. Well, he's determined, he's made a choice in his life and that's good. He really does love his hockey now and he's into it big time. So uh, there's always another year. Oh, there's lots of years. Lots of time. Lots of them. How many years we got? One at a time, big guy. <laughs> Coulter said to me that last year. Is that the last sheep hunt? <laughs> you know, you play it one year at a time. I'm not going to concede just yet. Who knows? I'm going to shove my water bottle in my bag. Thank you. We're, I don't know, 25 minutes into the hike and I'm watching them stumble and fall already. And, you know, we haven't even really started, so. The reality of time like, is kind of setting in for me now. Without Coulter here, it's just thinking about Dad. And Is he doing this for him or is he doing this for me? It's another year. Yeah. Why are you still here? Because you've made me come. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. That's kind of what I'm afraid of. <laughs> no, no, really. The reason I'm here is because I'm capable of being here. If I weren't capable and I didn't think that I can accomplish what we set out to do, I wouldn't be here. I mean, obviously I love hunting with him, but I also don't want to put him in jeopardy. And he's the kind of guy that will just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. We've seen it last year. He's tough and he'll keep going, but at some point. Oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? No. Somebody has to say enough is enough and it's probably not going to be him. Takes more than a little bump in the head to keep a good man down. I'm up. Ready to rock. It's not these kind of rocks. Oh my god, I love you. I may be suffering a major concussion. I might need a helicopter ride out of here. <laughs> might be right in here. I'm looking. I'm on the trail right here, so we'll just take the trail to the drainage and then we'll just walk it up the drainage. It's the gentlest. Oh. Another sheep season. Yeah. Like I say, every year, every every hunt is uh, tougher than the last one. At least that's my excuse. We keep rolling. And you know, the feeling, the hard times of climbing and pushing yourself and doing what you have to do to get to the top seems to go away over a period of year. You forget, you forget about the pain. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. I gotta take a break. Oh. We have a little bit of time to put in before we get up to the top. <laughs> Can you go down there and hop across? Or is that too slippery? Right here is best. Stand there, you can grab me. <laughs> That's slippery. Yeah. I'm not hurting so much as I just climbing uphill is my wind, eh? Like the breathing. There's nothing easy about this. So it's like I say, one step at a time and keep moving. And if I have to stop and rest, stop and rest. There's nobody pushing me, so that's good. Yeah, it's been a year since I've been up in the mountains like this. So it's something that not everybody can experience, you know? So I'm, I'm so grateful that I'm able to hang out with my son and uh, last year my grandson. It's just uh, to go sheep hunting is a dream for a lot of people. And this is like my sixth year. So to be here, I can't say enough. It's uh, something that I'll cherish for as long as I live. I'm gonna have to take a break, bud. It'll be on video. Hopefully we harvest the sheep. If that shouldn't happen, well then you accept that too. The thing of it is, is that my grandchildren, great-grandchildren will always be able to look back and say, that's my grandfather, you know, and look what he did at his age. So that's incentive for a lot of people. I guess I'm a celebrity. 
<laughs> no, no, I don't think you need to put that in there. Can you take this off me for a little bit? Thank you. Yeah. The one thing about it, when you hunt with me, you get lots of time to sit down and rest. You never be wore out traveling with me, that's for sure. Lots of time glass, let's put it that way. Yeah. That's what we want. I say, I think this will be the last time we do this. Hoping and praying we come across something, right? We will. I wouldn't be here if we didn't think we would. No, for sure. And you know, like the trails and stuff that are in here, they, I mean, they could have been here hundreds of years. We likely were. Yeah, she's open country for sure. Wow. Looks just good to be able to see them. Yeah. Just give me a second, bud. I got it. Next time. Come on. You take it next time. Oh, Greg. Oh, and by the way, Greg volunteered to take my patch. Actually, he picked it up. I didn't uh, pass it off to him, but I'm grateful. It gives me a little more ability to move this a little bit faster, I guess, if I get up. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Get my feet under me. Well, we're making progress. I just say I continue to say this, but one step at a time, and the elevation is gradually we're getting steeper, and we're starting to get into some rock formations. Dangerous stuff because it's always shaking, wobbly under your feet. You know, we do have the wind at our back, and that time it uh, picks up to the point almost puts you over. I um, try and really maintain my feet and watch where I'm stepping, and that's why I'm slow. I mean, if I was young and agile like these guys, I'd be able to run through these like they do. Well, that's, those days are behind me, a long way. But yeah, every step is critical. We're still moving up. We're still making our way to where our first camp is gonna be. Likely another couple hours, maybe two or three hours of climbing. And at this point in time, we've yet to uh, pick up on the sheet. So they're here, lots of sign, but uh, it's a matter of uh, coming across them or them coming across us. So we'll continue on. We just came across this bit of a fossil, I guess, or bone laying on the ground here, and it appears to be a marmot by the, the large teeth in the front. If Coulter was here, he'd have it in his pack. I'm sure he would. To be a good papa, I'm gonna save it for him. I hope I don't crush it. Hopefully it'll survive. But yeah, I think he'll be happy with that. Just a little souvenir from the hunt for Coulter. A marmot. At my age, a lot of people say, what the heck's he doing out there, you know, is he crazy? And I, have, I question myself at times as to that too, you know. But um, getting onto sheep and seeing them and your heart rate just takes off and your cardiovascular kicks in and is incredible, absolutely incredible. I loved every minute of it. You know, there was times when I, my tongue was dragging the ground. Nice job, Pa. Holy mackerel. We got four sheep up here. I can't tell what they are. They appear to have some horn, but one is skylined and it doesn't look like it has much. So who knows, it could be a, it could be a U. I guess we'll see. It's windy. Honestly, dad. You have got to be the luckiest guy on the planet. Why? What do you mean? There's four rams, three legal, and one sublegal. There's one there standing real close to us, so you're actually looking at us. You see him? <laughs> yeah, I see him. Yeah? Oh man, that other ram is nice. I don't know either, Dad. It's how bad do you want it? Yeah, well... It I want it, it's a matter of can I get there. Yeah, I feel that they're probably gonna stay there the night. Why would they go anywhere else? 
like let's just go get on the other side the leeward side out of their sight yeah pitch the tents i'll watch them till it's too dark yeah to see them anymore and then we get up at 4 30 in the morning and we go i'm fine oh that's exciting okay let's go I'm pretty darn excited about what has just happened in the last half an hour. You know, an all day hiking to get dad up into the Alpine and he's doing his thing. He just keeps plugging away. Just, it's always the concern about the weather in the morning and clouds are building and those are all factors that lead me to want to really get moving and do a big hard push and get over there. But it's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is hang tight for tonight, watch them, put them to bed. We're probably a couple kilometers from them now and go at them in the morning. The worst thing we could do is run up there now and blow them out of the country and then it's all over. It's good to be a young stallion than an old gelding. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? I think so. Do you feel like a young stallion right now? Oh, I'm a young stallion. Yeah, look at me go. Giddy up, go. <laughs> well, I can tell you, you're not put to pasture yet. No, not yet. Well. Why don't you just go sit down? This is going to take me a bit. Yeah, it's kind of nice to get in out of the weather and to a spot where you can put the tent up and spend the night. Uh, we're fortunate, very fortunate. Greg was out and he did a little bit of scouting and spotted four what he considers really nice rams. So, so as it stands right now, I'm ready to hit the hay. I'm tired, but it's been a good day. Yeah, I slept off and on. It was pretty windy last night and the flapping of the tent kept me awake quite a bit of the night to be honest with you, but uh, I feel refreshed, I'm ready to go. Got my morning cup of joe, ready to go. You know, there's so many things that uh, can go right, but there's always that one time that things go wrong, it's uh, game over here. But uh, no, I'm positive, gonna go and get me a beautiful ram, looking forward to it. Good to go? Yep. Yeah, right now, we're slowly closing the gap. It's a lot of climbing, obviously. I don't know what the altitude is here, but we're getting up higher with every step. You really don't have time to think about the sheep, although it's in the back of your head that you're hoping and praying that they're still holding in the same area and possibly bedding down in that area. So, yeah, that's where my head's at right now. It's just a matter of keep moving. You know, these days that we just did, I, I proved that you can conquer the mountains if you have the mental makeup. And uh, if there's anybody out there watching this that thinks they can't do it, just give yourself a chance and you'd be surprised what you can do when you push yourself. We'll move at our pace, that's all I can do. How are you making out? Oh, slow but sure. <laughs> Not setting any land speed records, that's for sure. <laughs> We're getting closer to the summit of this mountain range, so another two days we'll be at the top. <laughs> Do you want me to take the gun? Not yet. You can take it at some point, likely, but if I make it to the top without giving it up, I should be good at going across the top. I hope. Okay. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Cover a little ground, eh? We've been moving for almost two hours now and we're within striking distance. I think we've got about another hour of hiking and then we should be in a position to be able to see them and get a range as to how far they are. Okay. How are you feeling? Good. Yep. I'm here. <laughs> so far, so good. Okay. Just uh, another hour. Let's go. Yeah. We just gotta keep our head down, kind of methodically just keep going. 
get up top, and then take our time and get ourselves into a position where we can shoot. Right on. See if I can see them. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. You just keep making your way up. Yeah. that we're in such a tough hunting terrain that we're wide open. It's really, really difficult. You can be seen for miles. Like we're sitting here and we can see across the valley there. And if they skyline us, they can see us just the same. So could have even smelled us because the wind is at our back today. And it's going right towards where they were. So there's a number of reasons why it just didn't work. But they're on the move. As you can see, they're gone across the valley exactly where we just came from. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of hunting. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. <laughs> that's follow, right? We know where they, well, we know where they went, so. Yeah. I don't know what to do in these kind of situations. It's kind of like a long, long shot or right on top of them. And right on top of them is no good. No. They're going right over that ridge. They're not stopping. So those sheep did exactly what we didn't want them to do. They went down through the drainage and up the other side, over the mountain, and out of sight. So it's been 6K push to this point, and I think the decision is made that we're gonna continue. Yep, not quitting now. We know that there's sheep here. It's just a matter of them cooperating a little bit and making sure that we do our best to get onto them again. How far can they go? How far can they go? Good question. How are you feeling about it? <sighs> tell you when we make it to the other side of that mountain. The only thing is if they blow off this mountain and go down into a valley and across and up another mountain, um, that might be a different ball game. Well, I'll tell you, I'm more than willing to go after them as far as is necessary, but we're not gonna go forever, right? <laughs> we're not gonna go forever. Right. Let's drink up and move forward. Yeah, sure. Well, we're into our second stock and we're almost to the top of this mountain here. We came from, you can see over my shoulder, where we came from today. We're all the way across that valley, and we're back heading up this mountain, doing our final stock for the day. We'll see how it turns out. These are the four sheep that uh, we pushed earlier today. So we let them, give them enough time maybe to uh, collect themselves, and then we're going to uh, try and get them in a position here this evening. If all goes well, if not, I hate to even think about that. But uh, yeah, we're here, we're gonna give it a go. Actually, that climb wasn't near as bad as I thought it was. I mean, it was a workout, but nothing we couldn't handle, right? They're all that way. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like uh, the guys are returning. They went uh, along the ridge and they dropped down to see if they could see anything out that way. So obviously there's nothing, they're on their way back. Otherwise they would have been moving at a whole different pace. Howdy, give it No, we've been glassing all the time. You're here thinking that something might come, you might push something up out of the hole. No luck. No luck. There's a bit of a spine that I can't yeah. see. Oh, yeah. So we gotta go see. Hopefully the sheep didn't clear this uh, ridge and then on over the next ridge, because if they have, it's game over. So watching those sheep 
walk away was disheartening, but I really felt that if we did a push, we would find them again and possibly have another shot. It just didn't happen. So walking back to my dad, I really knew that this was the end of an era. I felt that he pushed it this year as, as hard as he could. It's one of those things that you know is inevitable, but you never want it to be now. And it makes you think about just life and all of us. When you watch your hero, you see the, uh, the decline and now knowing that I'll probably never see him on a, another sheep hunt again is, is really hard. Proud of you, Dad. <laughs> Proud of you, son. No, we're, we're good. So can I get my boots off? <laughs> sure can.